what's up everybody welcome back to another episode of B is for build so we're here working on the Huracan and as you guys know we wanted to build a stick shift Huracan so we have a manual transaxle out of a manual Audi R8 V8 type thing brand new thing that we got there and we need a clutch to be able to you know engage and disengage the clutch so in today's episode we're gonna try and be the first people ever to install a clutch in a Lamborghini Huracan so that means diving in the interior, ripping out some stuff to be able to make room for a clutch pedal, which I'll tell you right now, there's not enough room. Then we gotta run the clutch master cylinder through the firewall, bolt all that stuff there, run a line down into the slave cylinder that is already inside of our Audi transaxle. Should be fun, stay tuned. Before we get started working today, I wanna to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Metal Supermarkets. Metal Supermarkets is my favorite place to get metal. All the metal that you see behind me on this rack back there, that's all from Metal Supermarkets. Uh, in fact, every piece of metal that we've ever bought for any build on here on BS for Build all came from Metal Supermarkets. So obviously, I'm pretty fond of the place. Metal Supermarkets is extremely convenient. They call themselves the one-stop shop for metal, and it truly is. They have amazing different variety of different types of metals that they keep in stock. You can head down there, or like what we're doing today, we're actually calling in a delivery, um, and we're just gonna have it delivered to the shop. Uh, and, but they got so much stuff, such a large variety. It saves you time, it saves you effort. You just head on in and get what you need. Once you find out what you need, they have no order minimums. You never have to buy extra material that you don't need. They have extremely fast service, so they can whip up your order right then and there. I normally just head on in there, point out what I need, have them get it cut to the sizes that I need. I hang out for a couple minutes and it's ready to go. And on top of that, they have great customer service. I've always had a great experience working with those guys and they're very knowledgeable. Uh, they've been able to teach me about different types of metals. So I'm making sure that I'm not, you know, wasting money on something or making sure that I'm getting something strong enough for the project that I'm working on. And if I ever have something that's really hard to get, they can always help me source the right materials that I need. So guys, head to metalsupermarkets.com or use the link in the description below and find a location near you believe me it's you're gonna want to remember this place eventually you're gonna need some metal for a project and you're gonna be like yep that's exactly where I need to go and you won't regret it thanks so much to metal supermarkets for sponsoring this episode now let's get down to work so to get our clutch installed we got to get our pedal in the right spot so there's kind of a uh, it's a little dark in here but you can see there's kind of a buildup right there and then you have a foot rest so that's got to go the buildup's got to go we got to kind of trim everything down that we can and then uh, we might be able to make room for our pedal. We're gonna have to modify our pedal as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is jump into here. I'm gonna be peeling back the carpet, taking off that footrest, and seeing what we can cut out before we get into the firewall here. So you can see that you can't keep cutting out too far. Or you, 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 know, you know, you run into problems, but I think there's room. We've scoped this out. Hopefully we can make it work. All right, guys, we're in luck. So when we came back here, uh, Oscar pulled the carpeting back and uh, this thing right here unbolts from the car. And this is like a standoff bracket that's built up off of the actual body itself that can be removed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and unbolt it. It's just a few bolts. And then we're gonna see how much space we have left to kind of play around with the pedal. We seem to be getting just a little bit lucky. Now we already measured all this stuff out to make sure it was possible, but well, not until we have to, after we bought the car. So yeah, a little bit lucky. Uh, if we thread it right through between this thing and the steering shaft and we come up here, um, we do have enough room for this thing to operate. Now you can kind of see how this is this is out a little bit more than the brake, and that is okay. That's what we've been looking at, and I'm totally fine with that. It's gonna sit out a little bit more with the brake, but you know, at normal operation, you're not using the brake and the clutch with the same foot, so you're not kind of transitioning back and forth like you do with gas to brake, gas to brake. Uh, so we measured our, um, I believe it's called articulation, the, uh, the swing of this arm to be able to fully compress the uh, master cylinder. That's the master cylinder, by the way, guys. So anyways, if you, uh, we measured like from here to here and we need about six, six and a half inches. And uh, where we're seeing, it looks like we have 
about eight probably. So now the thing is, is that this needs to stand off from the wall pretty far. So we're gonna work on building a spacer right now so we can uh, space this thing off the wall. We'll have to build an extension to the threads right here and then we should be able to start getting it installed. It's coming together quick. Time to start fabricating and doing good stuff. Oscar and I have kind of designed a standoff system that we're actually going to use. It's going to connect up to, it's a spacer um, that will put our pedal in the right spot in the car. So it's going to connect up to here and then run out to our firewall. And we're actually expanding the footprint on the firewall. So we have a nice large footprint to distribute the force uh, that the levering action of the clutch has against the firewall. Uh, so it's going to come out, what do we say, five and a half? Uh, five and three eighths. Five and three eighths inches. It's going to come out from here and then it's going to um, go up on the inside of our firewall. And then this will go on the outside of the firewall and bolt into it. So Oscar's going to go ahead and cut that out of the tube. And so the tube is so that this piece can actually actuate inside of here real nicely like that. And we'll run the bolts on the outside. It's going to be really slick. So Oscar's going to go ahead and fabricate that beast up right now. Fabrication is done and I made a trip down to the hardware store. So here is our extension piece. Now that goes ahead and slides on like that under here. We are extended our threaded rod and we have like a little bit of adjustment here and it also has a good amount of adjustment as it slides into there. So it kind of goes like from that piece to that piece to this piece. Now we could test set this all up, but there's really no point because it really needs to get installed in the car. But basically these, these bolts run all the way through all three pieces to hold it down tight. So uh, next thing we gotta do is find our placement in the car, um, drill a hole that looks exactly like this. Oscar's already got the template for it. Um, and it's gonna land right around here in the firewall. Um, and we got very lucky that it doesn't need to land here and it doesn't need to land here. It actually does need to land the only space that we have a little bit of room. So this is gonna be one where we'll test fit about 15 times, drill one hole and pray that it's perfect. We got our first placement. Now this is a bit of a work in progress right here, but uh, we're liking where it's sitting and it still has quite a bit of adjustment available. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, start to modify our firewall to accept it, the full unit, and then uh, we'll bolt it in there for the first time and start test actuating it. Firewall has been modified. We actually are gonna mount it a little bit off of center. That's on purpose to give us a little bit more clearance. Everything's looking good. We painted our, uh, our metal piece so it doesn't rust or anything like that. Here's kind of the whole setup. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in there and install it right now and then we can start testing it out. All right.
right guys, we got our uh, master cylinder and our pedal mounted. This is this is really cool. So we tucked it under here. Now, um, no matter what way we mounted this, if our pedal was gonna work, we were gonna have to do a, uh, a fluid pump to be able to fill up. So normally, you know, you'd wanna have this out here somewhere so you could just unscrew the top of it and pour your clutch fluid in there. We were never gonna be able to do that. So, um, you know, down at Harbor Freight, they sell these little fluid pumps that where you put one thing in your jug and then you pump it a couple times and it goes up and in. That's how we're gonna have to fill this the first time. And anytime we want to top it off, we're also going to have to do that. Not a big deal. It's like filling up your diff or anything else like that. Uh, you know, obviously there's sacrifices when you do stuff as crazy as building the first manual Huracan in the world. So our master cylinder is there. It's mounted. It, it's it's tight. It's super, super strong. You can see it's moving the whole vehicle. Now coming around, connecting up to it. Here is our clutch pedal. Now um, it's sitting off of the brake pedal, like about an inch and a half, two inches. That's so I can get full actuation right now going all the way down um, to utilize all of the pump now you guys know if you have a clutch at home that you know you don't really utilize the full spectrum so we're gonna tune this in there's a uh, full threaded rod right there that we can tune the pedal in or out as we need to once we get fluid in there and once we run the whole system we'll tune that up how we like it but uh, I, I was testing it and like sitting in here using it here I'll show you one second so this is me sitting in here you know it's like you know brake gas over here and then clutch and it's it's nice and comfortable you know like resting spot for your foot you still have room to rest your foot and then when you want to hit it you don't have to like although it seems like it's high up you don't actually have to lift your foot at all you just move your foot over and hit the clutch so uh, it's very comfortable it looks a little weird but it actually in the end is very very comfortable and totally totally driver friendly and usable so I'm really happy about how that turned out so that is the clutch mounted so now we got to do a couple more things we got to uh, kind of put our interior back together so this all looks normal and then we got to run our clutch line that comes out of the master cylinder uh, we're gonna figure out where we want to run it probably down the center of the car it runs out and then underneath our transaxle at the bottom there's access to if you look at in there and you see well you won't be able to see it there's a little green thing in there that is our slave cylinder that pushes on the release disc for the clutch we need to run underneath and access that and then once we apply you know the hydraulic pressure and the fluid that will disengage our clutch so we got to run that line interior buttoned up and now we're moving on to running our cable so where's our steel braided okay we have a really long steel braided uh, clutch cable that we're gonna run uh, from our master cylinder right out of here and then we're gonna come down loop around and we are going to uh, we spent some time looking at the underneath we're gonna follow the bottom railing of the tunnel under 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 and then come around here fasten it up to kind of all our other supports and stuff like that and then go into the bottom of our transmission clutch cable is ran so you can see this is where we attach to our master cylinder we had to do a small amount of adapting but that's okay we're still like plenty fine for space here so then it dives down stays within the center console well not the center console sorry the center tunnel it's gonna be on the inside railing like we talked about earlier boom makes a straight shot down comes back and then you're gonna see well there's the line right there we're gonna kind of run it parallel it's running right through there and then it's gonna parallel to the starter line and then it goes right into the bottom of our transaxle now We'd love to fill this thing with fluid and do some tests, but we wouldn't really learn anything because it already will go through the gears and stuff like that. Um, and we know that we have to take the engine out multiple times, which would mean then, you know, all of our, uh, our clutch fluid would just drain all over the floor and it'd be it'd just be a bummer so we're gonna wait and we're gonna pressurize the clutch system uh, a little bit later also you know our sponsor Motul we're gonna wait for them to get us the recommended uh, clutch fluid that they recommend for this build so clutch is is basically done and we'll go ahead and pressurize that uh, after we think we have you know kind of our our last engine pull out of the way so now it's time to move up front for some real construction it's time to rebuild the front end of this Huracan. So if you guys remember seeing mine, basically there's kind of a box over here, right? Where the battery sits in it and all that other stuff. So we went over to the green Huracan, we spec'd everything out, we measured everything out, we measured the uh, supplies that we need as far as aluminum. We called metal supermarkets and we ordered our delivery, which will be here in a couple minutes. 
um, and then we can start like the full on construction. And basically the way that this thing works is you have these two bars kind of come to a union right about here. These two come to a union as well. And then there's a channel out of it for a three inch piece, a three inch box piece of aluminum that comes out. This is also three by three down here. And then they have a cross support that goes up here. Then we'll have a cross support that goes up here and down below and a, and a big flat face, which you guys will see kind of all come together. Um, so what Oscar's gonna do for right now is you can see where this was cut uh, oh by the way we don't have a front end of this car because it was cut off to sell it to somebody else so we could save money on the build uh, so, which is kind of weird but that's how we did it anyways um, so what th these cuts are pretty rough so Oscar's gonna come through he's gonna square these cuts up and then he's gonna go ahead and fill in um, where those cuts kind of went back too far he's gonna fill those in box them in so we have a good starting point just got the front section all wrapped up looks good as new very pretty so next step is well when we're ready to we'll cut those things flush with the body and then weld onto them our delivery has arrived from metal supermarkets this is the material that we are going to be replacing the front end with it's to the exact same specs as what the Huracan uh, originally had on it so we're gonna go ahead and start breaking that down next part of the construction process is Oscar is gonna start working on making these two things kind of come out close to each other so what they do on the Huracan is they both come out at their own angle and then they have a channel in the middle where our three inch square starts so Oscar is gonna go ahead and uh, start sleeving those welding them up and get them all to come together so we can start our box for the the front end. progress update on what Oscar's doing. Me and Kyle are off in the other shop doing fun stuff that you'll see later. But uh, so Oscar's got everything kind of measured out, tacked up, uh, the extensions part done. So he's going to make the trim, make the cut for the three inches to cut, start coming off of here. And once you get everything like mocked up for the three inches to start kind of the straight part of the box, uh, we'll go ahead and fully weld this thing out. Thank you. 
Oscar just wrapped up kind of uh, cutting everything, slotting it, and building our front post. So on the Huracan, the posts actually come out at an angle. They go out like this and out like this. We're copying the exact dimensions of the stock Huracan, like I said before. Uh, so he's got the posts ready, and rather than welding them in, though, he noticed that when we pull them out, we kind of have like multiple steps and stuff like that on the back because these are different size uh, pieces of metal, just like on the Huracan. So what he's going to go ahead and do is uh, build a half cap on here. That way, when he welds through everything, everything's all capped off, everything's waterproof, everything looks great, and uh, is all sealed up and very, very strong. So he's going to go ahead and cap those off and then bring those posts over here. And I assume we're going to tack those in for the time being. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll start moving on to the bottom ones. All right, Oscar's got all four of our posts welded in or tacked in um, and ready to roll. So the last thing that we gotta do is on the Huracan, there's a flat faceplate that goes across here. It's just a solid square. It's pretty thick material. It's about this thickness and it's welded onto the end of each one of these posts, kind of connecting them all up. So we're gonna do the same thing. Oscar's got it. These are all four degrees off because they kind of slant out. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and get these trimmed up and then we'll cut our square faceplate. We got the front plate uh, cut out and all these are nice and flush going straight across. So it's time to fully weld this thing out. He's gonna weld all the seams and everything, everything. He's gonna weld everything, everything. It's gonna be fantastic. Lots of welding to watch. Here we go. Oscar just wrapped up welding up all the seams so you can see he welded all around. Remember, if you're ever welding around your car, cover your windshield. The, the sparks, the jump off, every, all that, it's terrible for your windshield. So he welded all the way around on all the seams. And uh, what we did was we left the top ones that are a little bit more like cosmetic. They're gonna be seen if we open up our frunk. Uh, so he's gonna do those uh, by hand with the TIG welder. So he's gonna jump in now and clean everything up with a TIG welder and then do those uh, more visible ones. Oscar did a wonderful job of TIG welding the tops of these. Make it nice and pretty for our frunk display. Now uh, we're setting up the stoppers for the bottom and this is our plate that goes on the front here, kind of like this, and Oscar's gonna go ahead and get it on there and weld it on and that will wrap up our front structure. Looks like an odd rammer bar that we built onto this thing, <laughs> but this is actually how Lamborghini builds it. Uh, so we will we'll do some like, you know, thinner sheet aluminum on both sides and on the bottom, and this will build in our battery tray. And off of here comes our front impact bar and stuff like that. But that's it. We built the front, we rebuilt the front end. It's not nearly as fancy as it was hard to work on.
All right, guys, that is a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Oscar did a phenomenal job busting out that front end. That's a really good step forward. Now from there, we can build brackets that'll hold our radiators and we can start designing our cooling system, which is gonna be easy to design because we're just copying Lamborghini with cheaper parts. Uh, if you wanna help out and support the channel, head over to beastforbuild.com. We got these new shirts, the new Huracan work in progress shirts, and we got the triple stack shirts. They're in the store now. Oh, we also have the original BS for Build across the chest. Uh, you've been seeing us wearing them in the shop. If you want to help out and support, all the proceeds go directly into funding these builds. So thanks to all you guys that have already done that. Kyle and I, for the second half of this episode, we're actually off working on another episode. We're back on the carbon fiber game. Uh, cross your fingers, really. And hopefully the next episode we'll have a cool carbon fiber part done for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Peace! <laughs>